Kahi Energy proposed offshore wind project. The presenter is Noelani Kalipi, who is the Vice President of Development. Welcome, Noelani. We appreciate your being here tonight to educate us. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my presentation. Yes, please. That's okay. okay. Thank you very much, and thank you to the community for coming out. My name is Noelani Kalipi. I'm the Vice President of Development for Al Kahi Energy. Um, and we have a brief presentation about our proposed project and who we are. So al -Qaeda Energy is a joint venture between Progression Energy and EDF Renewables. We are incorporated in Delaware. We have a local team of Hawaii residents who are experienced in renewable energy projects. Our team has built more than 150 megawatts of wind and solar in Hawaii. And we have a track record with uh, stakeholder outreach and engagement. Our joint venture partner is EDF Renewables, who is a global leader in renewable energy and in offshore wind. And we deliberately decided to work with them because they have the technical and engineering experience, and they are currently working on 23 gigawatts of uh, offshore wind globally. Why would we want to consider offshore wind? Um, in terms of meeting Hawaii's needs, um, there are challenges for Oahu to meet the renewable portfolio standard and decarbonization mandates. Um, some of those challenges are the population density, the competing priorities of land, the increasing lack of trust and negative experience to date with utility scale renewable energy projects, and the lack of inclusive processes to co-create actions and opportunities to reach Hawaii's clean energy goals. Floating offshore wind is one of the possible solutions for clean energy for Hawaii. It's a proven technology in creating clean energy with a minimal footprint. Compared to onshore turbines, offshore wind, that's what the OSW stands for, offshore wind has a reduced proximity and visual impact. So it's not right up there in front, but it is very visible. This will be seen from wherever it is placed. The robust wind resource near Oahu can supply approximately 25% of the Oahu's load during the night and during the day. Um, one of the advantages of being out in the ocean is that the wind is more constant. There's extensive permitting processes and regulatory processes to study all potential impacts in comparison to many of the other clean energy technologies that we've been involved in in Hawaii to date. Uh, for offshore wind, um, we trigger almost every permit at the federal, state, and county level. So the amount of scrutiny, permitting, and requirements is, is rightfully large. There are many in influences on whether or not offshore wind can become a reality in Hawaii. There's the need for continuous community participation and engagement. There's the consideration of ancestral knowledge and cultural practices. There's the compatibility with national security and military readiness. And then just for site control, um, there are multiple aspects. The state of Hawaii's Hawaii State Energy Office is leading the coordination on whether or not offshore wind will work for Hawaii. Um, and in terms of site control, there's the, for the site in the ocean, there's the BOEM leasing process. BOEM is the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, which is a federal agency under the Department of the interior, which has federal jurisdiction over the outer continental shelf. There is the need to look at where you would land once you came on shore. There's the need to compete for a uh, contract from Hawaiian Electric. So there would be an RFP with Hawaiian Electric to determine whether or not um, we would be selected for uh, to generate power. And then if there were to be interconnection, um, the most likely place of interconnection is on the windward coast of the Ko'olau substation. There are also regulatory processes, as I've already addressed, um, and then multiple studies and multiple sectors, and this really doesn't list them all. This is just the beginning. Our vision for our project, oh, I did it not, okay, there. Our vision for our project, we would like to build a project that would be between 400 and 450 megawatts. 
We have not yet decided on the size of the turbine. The size of the turbines we are looking at are between 15 megawatts and 18 megawatts each. We would be utilizing a floating platform design because of the ocean depth in the project area. We are still evaluating which floating platform would work for the specific area of that would of the project. We have to study everything from currents to the bottom, the sea bottom, what happens, um, what the, you know, how the storms are, all of that, right? It would have to be designed specifically. If everything were to go well, the earliest, absolutely earliest and most aggressive date we could get to operations would be 2035. Our proposed location for our site is approximately 12 nautical miles east, east northeast of Oahu. I have a I have a project site map to show you. We have um, our company has executed a mitigation agreement with the Department of Defense. The BOEM process, which is the lease auction process, you have to participate in an auction to get the lease in the ocean for the project site. That process has not yet started. BOEM has come and done two meetings to talk about planning to date, one happening last week, and then we have not yet determined where we would want to land. We have a preferred area, but we haven't even gotten that far yet. The customer, if this were to go through, would be Hawaiian Electric, so we would be selling directly to the grid. Um, I've already shared that the interconnection point would be the Ko'olau substation. We have identified the plethora of permits that would be required and our community engagement is ongoing, continuous, and just starting. Um, to pick a site, these are the factors that are considered. There has to be enough wind. You have to look at the ocean depth and the bottom. It cannot be too, too deep. Um, you have to consider environmental and ecological factors. We have to look at the cultural impacts. We'd have to do a Pa'akai analysis, absolutely. Um, we look at distance to shore, right? We look at community priorities in terms of visual impact and access and many other priorities that the community has. Um, we look at shipping lanes, aviation lanes, and we look at impact to national security. This is our proposed site which is north of the Ka'ibi Channel. It is approximately 12 miles from the two closest points from Oahu to Molokai and from Molokai. I want to be clear that this is the project area that we have the de as a developer has determined is the best looking at the site uh, considerations and lists that we put together. In terms of the actual process, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management has a federal process that they are just beginning. They will identify the sites that they will determine are um, eligible for a lease. And as of right now, BOEM has not made a determination as to whether or not our proposed site will be in their leased areas. And we'd like our site to be in their leased areas. I just want to make that clear, but no determination has been made. And I know that there was a lot of confusion during the last two community meetings of the Bowen process um, about that point. Our project approach is that for any energy project, we have to, have, we have to be comprehensive and inclusive and looking at the big picture. Our, we, we, our approach is Aina as Ohana and proactive engagement and long-term dialogue about the life of the project, not just development, not just to construction, all the way to decommissioning. Um, we are collaborating with experienced global industry partners in engineering, technology, supply chain operations of offshore wind so that we can learn lessons from where this is being done all over the rest of the world. We're looking to co-create new opportunities with Hawaii residents for Hawaii. What does it actually look like? What can it look like? We are in a period of exploration. We are not asking anyone to support the project. We don't know enough to come to you and ask you to support the project. We are asking for identification of 
any concerns, um, any challenges, any worries, so that we can go ahead and look at that and study that. We have the time to actually try to do that. And this will be a multi-layered approach that looks at all aspects. At the end of the day, is offshore wind a good thing for Hawaii? And that has to be an informed decision as we move forward. One of the things we're doing that, uh, we're, we're, that is different from some of the other projects is that we are doing what we are calling a community participation process. That is a dialogue with multiple geographic communities, sectors, and interested parties about what does it mean to participate in a large utility scale project. We're also looking at what risks do communities identify and is there a way to mitigate these risks. So often project developers will do a risk analysis of, from their view of the risks to whether or not the project goes forward or not. We're also doing a risk analysis, hopefully with the input of community, of what is the risk to the community if the project goes forward, and using that as a starting point for us to have discussions about are there things that can be mitigated or not. Um, some of the outcomes could include, but will be determined, because we don't have a cookie cutter approach. Obviously, looking at all of the community benefits that have ever been done, right, is important, but we don't know what the communities do or don't want in terms of, quote, community benefits. And that's the purpose of the community participation process. Some of, these, some of the things that could be considered, just as examples, could include community ownership of a part of the project. Community governance related to the operations. For example, in some of the meetings that I've had, I've had Kupuna say, I don't care about making money, I want to be on the advisory board that talks to your board of directors every quarter so I can question how this is operated, right? Um, then there's the regular benefits consistent with all of the other community benefit agreements. And then what, what potential community-owned economic enterprises could come with something like this. So a lot of opportunities, I don't know what the answers are when it comes to that because it will depend on the dialogue that we have with people. Some other potential opportunities with respect to floating offshore wind include energy self-sufficiency and economic stability. This is not the only solution. It is part of a portfolio of technologies to be considered, right? And in no way, shape, or form are we saying this is the only answer. Um, but it will contribute to Hawaii as a global leader for clean energy, and the Hawaii economy hopefully not being as dependent on global oil markets um, as they fluctuate. Um, there is workforce development opportunities, there's education opportunities, um, and there's whatever we can create as we explore the community participation process. Key takeaways. Um, offshore wind as a, oops, I'm not sure what, what's happening, sorry. Offshore wind uh, is feasible as a technology for Hawaii and is a necessary part of exploring Hawaii's clean energy future. Um, we are ready to compete in all of the competitive processes once they come up, right? So there are competitive processes, again, between BOEM with Hawaiian Electric that we would still have to compete for, right? We're just proactively coming out and sharing. Um, to date, we have been working to ensure that the parties who can create the processes are actually doing that to see whether or not offshore wind can become a reality for Hawaii. Um, and that this is a comprehensive project that, if done well, could, could transform the level of community participation in development, construction, and operation, and the decommissioning of projects moving forward. We welcome all input, positive, negative, and neutral. The more input we have at this, especially at this early stage, the better it is for us to be able to explore. Um, and we are not asking for a yes or no. We are asking for help in identifying every issue so that we can study them and make and be able to provide information to make informed decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Noelani, for your informative presentation. May I please ask that you send a copy of the slide deck yes. to me by email and I'll share it with the board members. Yes, Madam Chair. All right, I'm going to be opening up um, discussion to questions and concerns. 
Can I see by a show of hands how many people would like to comment on this project? All right. Um, I'm going to, can you please limit your comments to one to two minutes since there are a large number of you. Um, you, you can uh, sit up here and then they can come up and address their concerns to you because we have people in the audience and also people online. So I'm going to designate approximately 30 minutes for this issue. So we'll try to get in as many speakers as we can uh, during that period, okay? So come on up and uh, line up. And in the meantime, I'm gonna ask the board members for your comments or questions. Chelsea? Thank you so much, Dolly, for a great presentation. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. One is, uh, you know, the peak usage uh, uh, electric rate right now is 41 cents a kilowatt. Will this uh, reduce, lower the kilowatt uh, rate for utilities? That's a, it, it, we don't know yet. We would hope so, but that's dependent on the cost and the rate structure uh, that comes in with the PUC. Our project will contribute to uh, how that is done. We don't get to negotiate a rate that the PUC then directs people to sell to customers. So it, it could increase? It could. That's great. Uh, second question, and the last question is, you mentioned uh, in this, the there's a press proposal that's scheduled for 2025. Knowing our fee process, that it would seem to me that the HECO is already well on their way. If you're anticipating an RFP process in 2025, a lot of decisions have already been made. And so I'm wondering what you know that, that belies the really the, the, the whole point about sure. whether or not this is too early to get involved. Sure, the, the Hawaiian Metric has done an integrated grid planning process that has been public, and they have put out a plan that says they would like to, uh, if offshore wind is going to be a part of that portfolio, that offshore, they would like to connect 400 megawatts of offshore wind in 2035. In order to do that, Hawaiian Electric has also announced that they will be um, issuing a long-term RFP sometime. Right now, it's it's between 2025 and 2026. Okay, we have a hand up, Holly, a board member online. Go ahead with your question, Holly, and then followed by Lisa. Hi, thank you for your presentation tonight. I appreciate it. My question is: the EV channel is used frequently by canoe paddlers, by fishermen. By uh, recreational for, for recreational purposes, uh, what safety studies are being done to determine how that'll impact the safety of folks who use the channel recreationally? As a part of the analysis that is done between the uh, the Boehm process as well as um, any of the uh, other federal regulatory and state regulatory. Um, agencies, um, those studies will need to be done. In terms of access, um, we are north of the channel, but um, we are, we've always said we did not want to prevent access to the area, so we have to study how close people could get to the actual flo floating platforms, and the, they are, the safety studies are not yet being done. Okay, thank you. Um, for, thank you very much. And you asked for community input. I've talked to several people, many people about this. Not one person I've talked to is in favor. That's the feedback I've gotten. Okay, thank you, Holly. Thank you very much for coming to the Wi-Fi Neighborhood Board. Um, I have a couple questions for you. Um, I understand that you uh, were in a three-year engagement with the DOD's siting clearinghouse to um, have them lower the defense posture around Oahu in order for you to be competitive um, with your project. But they had to change the red zone around Oahu to a yellow zone in order for you to be competitive. Is that correct? Not exactly. The red zone was a mission incompatibility map which said 
that, that, that was issued in 2017, which said um, any project within this area was a risk to national security. Right. The mitigation um, agreement that we did addressed certain issues, like not being in certain submarine lanes, Correct. not being in certain aviation lanes. It didn't decrease the defense posture. It addressed what were, how, what areas could be used in that area that would not impact um, national security. All right, so if you had not entered into that three-year process and come up with this mitigation agreement, would you be competitive? Without that mitigation agreement? We would have to have picked a site that was more in the yellow zone than the red zone. Correct, thank you. So, my next question is, how many projects do you have that are up and running already in offshore wind? And I, I don't know the answer to this um, successfully anywhere in the world. So, Al Alcahi Energy. Alcahi Energy is the name of this project, and yes. we, we don't have any operating projects to date. Our joint venture partner, EDF Renewables, is working, uh, is about, um, I want to say three years ahead in the Atlantic Shores project, which is off of New Jersey. There are only four uh, floating offshore wind projects in uh, operation currently globally. Is that the one that they just had to stop construction on because? No. No. All right, so a different offshore wind project in New Jersey that just had to fold its doors. All right, thank you very much. Okay, come on up. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Um, my question is, you mentioned that you're in the exploratory phase, um, but you've also said that Bowen has obtained a lease and there is land adjacent to the Kanioe substation that has already been purchased. Is that correct? And how is it that you've already gotten a lease and bought land if you're exploring? So we are exploring, there is no lease yet, Boehm has to lease the ocean. As a part of um, looking at how we could be most competitive in the processes, we have purchased a parcel next to the Ko'olau substation. Who is funding this? Uh, our project company is funding it. Alkahi. Yes. Uh, are they getting funding from Kulupono no. or the government? No. They have gotten independent funding. Correct. EDF Renewables is funding it. Okay, so Joyce, you can't monopolize all the questions. Mahalo. Tara But before I start, this is not part of my testimony. I just want to bring to light that we are in Hawaii, and that you need to know that because when people are speaking up, and it does not sound like agreeable, that does not mean you shut them down. Because it's part of the ability to say what they feel. And I did hear that they did not know, I heard that they did not know. So again, it's not right when Kanaka are trying to speak up and then they get shut down for your own thinking and mindset of how things you should be, that it should be polite and cordial always. Because I've seen other Kanaka being shut down in this meeting. So, I want to bring this up. So, Noilani, you are a military liaison. You are vice president of this company that rebranded to Alkahi from Progressive or Progression. When I asked you what the community, what if the community says no, big, solid no to military lease renewal, no is no, what then? How do we stop it? And you said, it's a process. It has to go through the process. Now, you know, we all know, as you just heard, oh, it's the OD, it's gonna go. That's disconcerting because you know where that leads, all this corruption in Hawaii. No matter the EISs, EAs that should stop things, it somehow still goes through and it becomes a, a binder in the library resource shelf. So, 
Uh, I notice you also say you're contradicting. You say you're not looking for yes or no, you're not looking for input. Then why are you going to ask community on what to study? You know, come on, you are a Kanaka. You already, you're on many boards and many cultural things. You should know the depth of Inoa. Ka ibi, protect ibi, leave them in place. And that the culture, it should never be at the expense of Aina, Vai, the ecosystem for the benefit of a few or for profit. And finally, is this. So ka ibi, just leave it in place, do not disturb it. In addition to federally protected animals. So even just like looking at this, does, does that not stir you? Like how can you even think of, let's, let's even uh, think about studying this. This is disconcerting. And finally, Because of this sonar, it killed the reef. Velzy land coral reef is dead. Yep. All right, thank you. So, can we have that? Tara, thank you. With respect to the sound, that's exactly why there needs to be studies <laughs> and <laughs> technology. <laughs> And, and looking at whether or not technology can operate quieter. We need to take a look at that. Oh, okay, so let, let, me, let me put this quieter. Let me put this quieter. Tara, I think that you've made your point. You've made your point. Can Please you pass please. the microphone to the next speaker? Shut it down, don't even need to say it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Jersey 
paper on Saturday, July 13th, this was just 2024, one of the turbine blades from Vineyard Wind, an offshore wind development company, broke apart littering the ocean with floating debris and depositing sharp fiberglass on the shoreline, prompting beach closures and warnings for beachgoers to wear footwear. The turbine blade that broke was 351 feet long, taller than the Statue of Liberty. So when it breaks and Kanaloa is littered with our kola, with our mano, I know that we run in our blood. That's our family out there. Our Evie, our ancestors, actual ancestors are out there. No, I just need you to think for real. When you're walking in your path and when we are walking in ours, We will be face to face, because I will put my life on Kaibi. My mom was one of the founders of Save Sandy Beach, to keep it pristine coastline, with my mentor, Elizabeth Riley. You can have this in Kanaloa. So, I humbly say to you, with aloha, that we will see each other again. Mom, mahalo. So, can you hear me? So, I just want to ask you how do we stop this from happening in the water? And how do you protect the whales once they strike those cables with their big fittings? There's no hospitals for them to go to. And that last thing, when there's a hurricane, right? How do you put them on the winds? What happens when they all get destroyed? So, all of that power is left in the ocean. And the seals, the turtles from the beach, all the ivory glass, you know? It doesn't make any sense. Thank you. So, the answer is the reason why we need to do the studies is to assess that and to see if those kinds of things could be mitigated with respect to the whales, given that they are an endangered species, right? whether or not we can do a habitat conservation plan. But taking a look at the studies, if it cannot be mitigated, if it absolutely cannot be mitigated, then when we get to the point of whether or not this project can benefit Hawaii, we need to take a look at that and make a decision. Hello, my name is Emory. I'm with the Kaibi Coalition. First, I want to thank all the people online who didn't make it tonight, but I know there's many of you out there. I was taking my, uh, notes as you were speaking. The Kaibi Coalition, over 50 years, has fought to keep Kaibi open and free of development. You use the word community participation process, and you're not asking us yes or no. Yet, you went to the Department of Defense and didn't ask our participation. You didn't ask us yes or no. You lowered our defense. That's outrageous. A private company lowered the defense of our island. Yes. That's outrageous. Wow. The ocean is our wilderness. It's our ocean wilderness. If it starts there, believe me, it'll go around all the other islands. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have it off of Waikiki? Why not? Because the view for the tourists. Do you think the tourists want to look out and see wind turbines? But yet it's going to be in our backyard. Um, I want to say when we hear studies and we want to talk to community and have cultural work done, I've done a number of studies through the years for different cultural sites in different areas. And when an archaeologist does it, if they're hired by the company, many times it's skewered to match the developer, and the mitigation that happens is the mitigation of our culture and our precious sites. I don't have a question for you. I have a question for the audience. Many of you have known for decades, and on, um, you can, on the uh, screen too, but my question is to the community. 
Do we want air turbines in the Ka'ibi coastline? Do we want it anywhere in our island? No. 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 no, 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 no. We support alternative energy, but we don't support this. So again, I don't have a question for you, but thank you for letting me to ask a question of our community, because these are the people that we're going to have to live with this, and we need to stop it now. That means going to the Department of Defense and having raise the level back up to red, because that will shut everything down. Right. So we need our help of, of, of Representative Ward and our congressional team. Thank you. Five more minutes or so. We have about three hands online. And uh, so, one, two, three. Page first, go ahead. Go ahead. Paige, then Sam. Thank you. So you keep reiterating that every time somebody brings up an issue, and this has been pretty consistent with all the meetings that you've been going to, you, your response is that that is something we have to mitigate. That is something we have to study. That is something we have to look at. That is something we have to decide if that's going to be able to be mitigated so that we can move forward or if we're going to move forward. And I, I understand what you're saying, but it sounds to me like you already know this is going to impact the environment. Don't, don't look like that, because you know this is going to impact the environment. Everybody breathing on this planet and in this state knows that this is going to impact the environment and the animals and the wind and everything else. We also know that when the next hurricane hits, that these are going to get destroyed. No. They're not going to be able to survive mm -hmm. hurricane winds. So my question to you is, is when you say we have to mitigate how this is going to impact the whales, let's just take that. What it sounds to me like you're saying, and please tell me if I'm wrong, is that we're going to do a study and we're going to find out just how much impact we can make to the whales and still do this project. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like to me. If that's, not, if that's not right, then I want you to correct that. But that's exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like you're saying, we're going to get to a point where we study, well, they're going to be impacted, but yeah, but we're going to make so much bloody money off this project that they were more to us. Yeah. It's worth more to us to do this project than it is to figure out how bad we're going to impact the environment. So please tell me if I'm right or wrong on this. There is, if there is going to be impact, right? We have to study how much impact, and it's not just an economic, it's not just an economic um, evaluation, right? We're looking at clean energy against the impact of warming of the ocean, against the impact of sea level rise, and all of that, and that entire comprehensive view needs to be taken. Now, if, if it is, um, if the studies show that the impact to the animals, that the impact to the environment is such that it outweighs any of the benefits of the projects. The, in addition to us saying no, the regulatory and permitting um, agencies will say no. Then who decides? Hold on, Paige, that's enough. Just no, 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 no. Paige, last question. Who decides when that impact is too much? That's a great question. I think it's, it's a comprehensive, it, it can be the developer. It can be if the developer stop, decides to step down. It also can be the permitting agencies if the developer decides not to step down. It can be a federal agency that says this cannot be mitigated, no go. It can also be. Yeah. All right, next question, Sam, and then uh, the lady in line. Okay. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for coming to the community and presenting on this. I know it's, it's got to be difficult for you, um, and mm. you certainly have a lot of courage. Um, I share the same concerns as uh, many people in the community when it comes to the environmental impacts. Um, especially to the, the native uh, endangered wildlife that exists in the ocean and, and in the air. Um, I also have a lot of concerns with the way that our current energy system works, the fact of how reliant we are on imported fossil fuels 
if any of the community members know about the Exxon Valdez, we do not want that to happen here in Hawaii. Every single day, ships are coming in full of oil that we use to power these very same lights. Uh, we were chopping off mount the tops of mountains for coal to power the power plant until that was recently shut down. Um, this, this island is not operating sustainably as it is. And if we do not find other alternatives to the way that we power our lives and power our vehicles, we are gonna continue to be polluting in a way that is not Pono. That is not the way that Shit. we should be in, in a land that is rich with so many resources that we now know how to utilize. So uh, this, it needs to be studied. We need to understand the full ramifications of the impacts. And I want this, the community to take this same passion and look at the current system that's in place that's charging us 46 cents a kilowatt hour, the highest rate in the nation um, for, for our electric bills. And let's try to find a way where we can sustainably power ourselves at a much lower cost and, and live. Uh, but not for EV. Uh, okay. Um, next person. Thank you, Chair. No, I just commend you for coming out to the community. I know it's not hard to, it's difficult to stand here and present your, your cues here. I just want to make a few comments and then ask the question, Chair. Um, you know, no, I, I, you know, fourth generation native Hawaiian, uh, the site you guys are looking at is, you know, in this Ka'ili channel. And I just want to make uh, a few comments, you know, the native Hawaiians use the ocean as their icebox, you know that. And many of the Native Hawaiian community members are laid to rest out in the ocean. And so I am in total opposition of um, your project out in our one icebox and, and main um, bearing our Ivikupuna out there. Um, but my question is, um, you talked earlier about having other alternative <coughs> energy options. Has that been shared with community? Because I've only heard this wind turbine and I think more engagement in that level because I know um, alternative energy is important to be sustainable um, but I haven't heard from you folks about talking about what that other options are and I think that should be shared with community also. Um, thank you. Um, when, when I was talking, we are an offshore wind farm company so our primary technology is offshore wind. But in looking at benefits, in looking at how might we help community to meet clean energy goals, period, right? In the community participation process, it can be everything from how do we help everybody put solar on rooftops. I mean, there are many different opportunities um, to help and ensure that everyone can participate in the transformation for clean energy and we support all of the energy technologies. It's not a only offshore wind or only solar. I will say, as a Hawaiian and as a Hawaii resident, we need to be looking at everything uh, that we can to, to address our clean energy future. Okay, last comment from our local audience. Come on up. State your question. Uh, when you, you guys, you keep using your studies for a, as an excuse when my mom, when you say you're going to study to make it quieter, you say you're going to study, but you keep using, mostly the word that I keep hearing from you is your studies, which is mostly, this, which is mostly, which is mostly an excuse that you keep on using. Well, I'm sorry that it's being interpreted as an excuse. Um, studies and data are important for us to be able to make informed decisions, but thank you. All right, we're gonna be uh, allowing the online um, audience to ask their questions. We're done with the audience here. So, um, Gary Weller. Gary, go ahead. Mm, Gary Weller. <laughs> Hi everyone. It's been a while since I talked to you wonderful people in Hawaii. Um, 
I don't know if the lady in front of you was aware that in Waimanalo we had close to 650 people and they all said no. No women knows in the ocean. Uh, I'll start. I have, I have uh, six questions. One, if these windmills are approved all the way across this whole insane process, what do you think would be a good idea for end of life? <laughs> like cemeteries, every time that somebody goes into a grave, part of their money goes into an annuity to tear the whole thing down at the end. Because here in Hawaii, most of the windmill companies, as the windmills get old, they declare bankruptcy and leave a mess on our island. So I want you to think about an annuity with the state and any lease from Bowman, which I've suggested to them, would have a fund that you cannot touch, the federal government can't touch, the state can't touch, until the time of life ends and then that money is used to take the windmills back out of the ocean. Um, this meeting that you had with the DOE where they changed everything, are there minute notes, any PDF files, anything uh, that happened at that meeting that are available to the public? That's the next question. Uh, if you want to answer that now, I'll, I'll, or do you want me to read all the questions? Uh, pause, go ahead and pause, Gary. Let Noyelani respond. No, there are no public uh, minutes for that, for those discussions. They were not public meetings? No. For the Pentagon held private meetings for the private company over putting windmills in our ocean over here to lower our defenses. No, it was a, it's a DOD siting clearinghouse process. Uh, if you go to the website for the DOD siting clearinghouse, you can see what the process is. You file a permit with the FAA. Um, they forward that to the DOD siting clearinghouse. The DOD siting clearinghouse then identifies the military units within the jurisdiction. They call a task force together, and then you engage in discussions about what potentially can be done to mitigate the impact of a floating offshore wind farm. It's done for every technology and it's available to every developer nationally. So with the threat in the Pacific so high now, this was a decision that the Pentagon made independently of pressure from the state government, the administration in Washington, all for this alternate energy. You don't have to answer that, I'm just saying that's a statement. Okay. Uh, we have the highest electricity in the nation. Why or why? Why are you picking us when you, there's so many other places that you can experiment with before you come here to this pristine island with beautiful oceans all the way around it? Our number one business is tourism. And the last place in the entire world that anybody wants to see windmills in the ocean, it would be here. So there's tons of other places, Florida, Texas, the Gulf Coast, all over the place that you could have picked, but you picked here in Hawaii. Why? Because of the items I said in the beginning, um, for Oahu to reach the 100% RPS, Floating offshore wind is one of the technologies to be considered given its robust offshore resource. I have just finished reading a study that everybody in Hawaii should read. We, we put more carbon into the air than anywhere in the United States. You want to know why? Tourism. It has to do with the ships that come over here, the planes that land over here. They have to be refueled over here. But you know what, if I had a magic wand, and I could say tomorrow, no more tourists, no more hotels, guess what? It wouldn't change climate change in the world, not even a one thousandth of a percent. Because we are such a small impact on the world that all this stuff that put Hawaii with alternate energy makes absolutely no sense. And this was a state report and it was brought into the news back when Laura Thielen was up there at the Capitol around 2006. And probably one of the reasons she left government service and went to work for Parks and Recreation. Next, how are you going to protect these windmills from tsunamis? 
Our shores over here are tsunami prone. One of the places that the great tsunami that hit Hilo hit us was Makapu Point. There's evidence there that the waves went over the mountains over there. So in other words, your windmills would be like in some disaster movie where, where the rock and, and uh, other stars are running around trying to save people from windmill blades. I'm very concerned about tsunami. Um, and the last thing is, is that um, you mentioned something about uh, the, uh, it was a original study or, or that national uh, security area was done in 2017. Is there actually a document involved with that? There's a map that was issued by the Department of Defense called the Mission Incompatibility Map. And you can, I think, get it from the Bon Hawaii uh, website. If not, I will be glad to share it with uh, Chair Major, and she can share it. Thank you very much. All right, the next hand up. Uh, yeah. right. Alpudi. First Change their name. 
It used to be known as Hoi Offshore Company. It's a foreign LLC claimed in Delaware. Tell me I'm wrong. No, I said it was in Delaware. Okay, it's in Delaware. You know who else is in Delaware? Obama's Windward Paradise LLC, which is on Luna Lilo, stolen land. Yes. Okay. That is also a Delaware foreign entity. You know who else is? First Hawaiian Bank. First Hawaiian Bank is a Delaware LLC. So what you guys have to understand is this is their playground. They're, they're coming to Hawaii because it's easy. You know why it's easy? Because they keep telling the Kanaka, we don't own royal patents. We don't have a kupuna. They keep bringing everybody here claiming that the Kanaka hate you. We don't hate you. We feel sorry because we know the truth and we keep trying to come to these meetings and try to share. They're bringing you here, enticing you with our beaches, but they're lying to all of you. They want you to support the electric. This grid can't handle it. They already said it. The electric cannot handle it because that thing came from 1893. You know how old Hawaiian electric is? It was, Hawaiian electric was developed in order to put electricity in Iolani Palace. That's how old it is. Yes, I will bring it to a close. Mahalo, because you like to interrupt everybody. So what I'm trying to share with you all, okay? I'm trying to share with you all. This isn't the first meeting. You talked about other people who went to the Waimanalo meeting. They didn't let nobody talk, okay? I went to the Boa meeting. They asked me who's Kupuna. So that's why I find it hilarious that it says, oh, Aina is Ohana. Wrong. Aina is Kupuna. In addition to that, the Kanaka that stand today, we do not hate Haole. We are trying to help you understand what has been done in this aina illegally here because it affects every single person. All of us is sick from Red Hill. Nobody even realizes we're sick from Red Hill. We're sick from this electric ideas, these wind farm ideas, solar farms all over where we could have food sustainability. Wouldn't you prefer to have the ship stop and have the food be made here? So then why is there a solar farm that's owned by a San Diego company? Probably her friends, who knows? I don't mean, I, I know you're a nice person, but I'm just making comments, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm just sharing with you folks that we have solar farms going up, and you guys don't benefit anybody's electric bill less? I don't think so. Highest in the country. It's the highest in the country, that's correct. That's what the gentleman had mentioned. Highest in the country. Yeah, you can wait, because we have to wait and listen to your head ball. So you can wait too. So the point I'm making um, is, um, we as a community, all of us, we are the people, not them. We are the people. We must stand together. Your Kanaka, you know what we have? We have the patents. Yes. Support your Kanaka and proving that the patents are real because they're in your TMK. And I told this to all of the feds. All right, that's not the feds. Who is she? She's nobody. Okay, so I just want to help you guys understand what's going on in Hawaii. I drove all the way here, Lele, just to tell you to your face, stop interrupting people because these community members have questions and they have concerns because this has been happening to us for a long time. Yeah. And we would like this so we're the one public issue. and we're the people. Yes, and this and is one issue on the agenda. And we're going to be moving on to other issues. Now we can all agree to disagree, but we can be courteous in how we do it. All right. So um, I'm going to call the meeting back to order. We have one more uh, speaker online. Okay. Ready? <laughs> meeting is called back to order. Is and that we have a chair? speaker online, Representative Jean Ward. You wanted to make a comment or ask okay. a question? Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, no, I thank you for coming and facing the people of Hawaii Kai. But my question is from Waimanalo. I was told that in that meeting, Representative Ward, your uh, video is not on. Our video. Stop video. Just go ahead and continue then. 
Okay, uh, somehow my starting video is, it must be this look on my face. Uh, short of the pitchforks and the torches in Waimanalo, one of the things that I heard as a result of that meeting was that there basically are no off-ramps, meaning that once the process starts, it's a done deal. And I, I think earlier when you talked to Paige, he said, well, there could be a permit that could knock it out, etc." So was there something in, in Waimanalo that was misunderstood? When the process starts, it goes to the finish and there's and there's not an off-ramp. Or what are the off-ramps? If you could repeat what you had said earlier. Because I'm very concerned about governance and the model of how the democratic process works, whether it's federal, local, state, etc. Okay, I'm not from BOM, but my understanding, having studied the process, is that the first part is a planning and leasing phase, where they plan and they identify the areas to lease. Right, and that's why in my slide deck I said, while we have proactively identified a project site, they have not yet determined if that's something that they're, that's an area that they would want to lease. We want them to. I'm gonna be very candid and clear. Um, two, if when they do the environmental review of prior to the lease, if if they in that process they are they cannot be satisfied that there is if there's too much of an impact, then then the answer is they can't go forward with the lease, right? If that leasing process happens, and then there's something called the next phase is called a site assessment plan. That's an up to five year environmental review and permitting process. If in that process, the permits cannot be received or there is impact that is too large to be able to, uh, for the federal government, the state and or the developer to say, we go forward, then the project doesn't move forward. The next phase is a construction operations plan. That's what the construction plan would be. That also has to go through a stringent um, environmental review process. And that's just the federal level. At the state level, all of the chapter 343 environmental studies also need to be complied with. So in terms of quote off ramps, if there is a permit that cannot be achieved, the project cannot move forward. All right, uh, uh, is that your question, Representative Ward? Can I move on? Well, one, one, one bit, because that, that is very clear as to what is an EPA and other permits, but what if you left out and conspicuously absent is what of the people who are the inhabitants of those areas of which this place is going to be put? Where does that, is there an off ramp given the public opinion that you've heard in Waimanawa? that you've heard tonight and you're likely going to hear in other places? Yes, I think that as developers, when we have all of the information and can present it, and if that is still the sentiment, then we as developers have to make a very clear decision as to whether or not we want to move forward. I've been a part of other projects where we have decided not to move forward. In, and then in addition, we all know how much community input impacts all of the permitting processes in Hawaii with respect to the Board of Land and Natural Resources, with respect to all of the boards. And um, that is one of the strengths of Hawaii, right? Which is why I said we welcome the input and the ability to work with everyone. So in terms of the inhabitants and the processes, that's where, uh, that's where it'll make a difference. But no, you just said that it's up to you whether the project stops not the people. You, didn't you just say that? No, I said... You are the ones who say go or no go. We would, based on the input from the people, we would say as developers whether or not it's worth us moving forward or not. Once we have the studies and the information, that we're just one. I'm also saying the permitting agencies could also say that community opposition is too great, we're not going to do this. And natural defense is another issue. And I'll be working with the congressional delegation to make sure there were congressional delegation. Uh, case was not aware of the situation. They are aware. We 
we are working with them is a pretty big deal, and I think we need to go beyond just the neighborhood board and kind of a process. But thank you very much for appearing before the people of Hawaii. Okay, uh, board thank members. You, Chair. Uh, I had closed comments. Do you have a 30 second quick yeah, comment? Questions. Quickly, please. Um, my first question is, why did the Kaena one get shut down? The Kaena proposal was an unsolicited bid from 2016, and that was a different company. So you guys have nothing to do no. with that? Our, we, our company proposed, we also did an unsolicited bid on the south side of Oahu. Okay, and what happened with that one? That one um, was determined to be mission incompatible with respect to DOD. Okay, my second question is, are you guys interested in alternative sustainable energy or only the wind turbines? I think as a, as a company, we are focused on the offshore wind technology and seeing how far we can go with that. Many of us as individuals on the team are also supportive and involved in other technologies as well. Is that decision based on your relationship with that Delaware company, or no, the Jersey company, I'm sorry, the Jersey company? What are they, EDF? Is EDF that what you Renewables, they're actually based in San Diego. They have a project in New Jersey. So your guys' interest in this wind farm is because of your affiliation with them? No, our interest in the wind farm, and I can only speak for me as a member of this team, is in looking at what are all of the opportunities for Hawaii to move forward in clean energy. So my question now is, does EDF pay your guys' paychecks? Yes. So your contract with them is contingent on this thing happening? Our, whether or not we move forward is a, is a decision that they'll have to make. For now, as we're doing the studies, they're paying us to do the studies. So are some of the monies that you've already received or stand to receive is because they're hoping that this thing goes through? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, board members, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to make last comments. And we're going to move on from this issue. Elizabeth and then Lisa. I just wanted to make a general public statement that this is only a tool in the state's alternate energy toolbox. It is not a done deal. And we can petition the governor to recognize that this is not suited for Hawaii. And I, rec I recommend that this is the direction in which we move. Because we don't want to go through this with all due respect. We don't want future generations to go through this. So if we fend it off Kaivi as they did Kayena, it's gonna go somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else. This is ill-fitted for the state of Hawaii. So it either gets on the ballot and the people get to voice their opinion, or the governor steps up and recognizes that we could put our time, effort, and energy into simple things like efficiency. Look at what the word means. There are many things that we could do at the level of efficiency. Yep. And I'm gonna stop right there. Thank you so much. Yes, I have a couple of comments to make. In um, answer to Rep. Ward's question, it was very clear at the Waimanalo briefing by Boehm that community input would have no chance of stopping the process. I was there and I heard them say, communities could submit inputs and they could say, we don't want wind farms in our in Kaibi. And it would be annotated, it would be included as a footnote, if you will, to the process, but the process would continue. So the community that would be most affected by having wind farms in the Kaibi area would have no way to stop the process because the process would continue. And that was my very clear reading of what Boehm said during that meeting, number one. Number two, we're I think at a crossroads where we have national security, 
cultural and environmental and even economic um, influences saying that this is not the right solution for Hawaii. We don't want to exploit and commercialize our ocean wilderness for this particular technology at this time or even 10 years from now. I think we have better, better renewable energy resources. Now, offshore wind may be great for other parts of our country, but at this point in time, maybe not for Hawaii and certainly not for our ocean wildernesses. So those are my thoughts at this point. heard a lot of angst tonight about a potential solution that's being laid on the table for discussion. And attacking this poor woman for bringing this issue to us Nobody is despicable. Nobody attacked the weekend. Yes, I people attack her. No, 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 no. People I'm attack her. I'm going to see her. I know. No, no, no. This is not we. No, no, no. You have to tell him not to say okay, that, Roberta. So I, I, that's an accusation. I am going to start. I'm speaking. But Lahui never attacked her because she is of Coco. Did you listen? No one attacked her. There won't be any honu. There won't be any coral reefs. There won't be any beaches left unless we address the problem. How do you, how do you go? I'm not saying this is the solution. Well, how do you I'm not coral? saying this is because you need fresh water and salt water in order to grow coral and limu. Mm -hmm. So you're wrong, Ray. All right, people, we don't have to fight about this issue. He there's there's a lot of well, you shouldn't be making he's claims that I'm knowing right. what he's talking about. We, we all listen to you, so you can listen to me for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Jane is. I did recognize yeah. Jane. Yeah. Please let him speak. Thank you. We've got to address the problem somehow. And I'm not saying this is the necessary solution. That's a good point. Right? But I think we should listen and consider the merits and the demerits of all the possible solutions. Maybe offshore wind isn't the right one. I don't know. And I have not heard enough to make a decision about whether offshore wind is right for the particular place that this company would like to put their wind mills or someplace else on Oahu, around Oahu, there may be better choices, or maybe none of them are good choices. All right, Jean, bring your comments to close. Right. So I, I, would, I would just ask everybody to be more open and interested in having a discussion rather than a fight. We need to understand right. Hawaiian. That's what you need. Understand Hawaiians before you use the word attack right, yes. because that is not Hono to say that about us in here. We would never attack a Kanaka. Okay. Uh, so you need I'm, to retract that and no, teach I'm, your board. I would like to thank you very much for coming tonight to make this informative presentation. I'm not sure that the board is ready to make any training position. We may be, but. Um, uh, I, I'll be asking that of them. But I want to thank you very much for coming out and sharing your ideas with the community. We needed to know more about what this project would look like if it were to proceed. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank All right. You.